Hello? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, we're students from the Simplement Foundation on the summer program, and we're here to, pre uh, to present our final project about multitasking and an experiment we did on it. Uh, so I think everyone here uh, has seen someone bumping into a street pole while they were busy with their phone. In that moment, uh, you probably thought multitasking is definitely that. But on the other hand, we all have that friend uh, who can do like uh, 30 things at the same time. And you think, what am I doing with my life? I can't do that. <laughs> um, uh, what I just gave you are examples of two different people. One who's very good at multitasking and the other one who's not very good at multitasking. And that raises two uh, main questions. First, is multitasking good or bad? And second, what's the difference between those two people? Or in other words, is there a demographical pattern between uh, the person who can multitask and those who can't? And is multitasking efficient or not? So we base our project um, uh, in those two questions. And we're hoping to clarify th those questions in this uh, presentation. But first, we'll start with a brief theoretical introduction. Uh, so what we talk about when we talk about multitasking? Well, it commonly refers to the act of performing more than one task at the same time. So, for example, driving while talking on the phone or uh, taking, taking notes during a lecture. Uh, but how do humans multitask? Uh, it mostly takes place at the prefrontal cortex, which is a region of the brain that has executive functions such as uh, the planning and decision making. Okay, so now that we've done a theoretical introduction, let's talk about our experiment itself and about the experimental protocol. So our major goal with this experiment was to collect uh, data about people's performance while multitasking and also to test its effects uh, and to see if we can find some patterns. Uh, this experiment uh, was uh, done in four languages. We had a protocol in Portuguese, in English, in Spanish, and also in French and we had 50 uh, subjects. The first thing we did when uh, talking with the people was to explain them who we are and what are we doing and ask them if they want to participate uh, in our experiment. Then if they say yes, we would ask them to uh, do a small survey about themselves and we would assure them that it's totally anonymous uh, and also that their information will only be used uh, by us and for statistic purposes. Then we, do, we would also mention that our experiment has two major stages. So in the first part, we would ask them to click on a button as quickly as they could when the blue light would turn on. Uh, this was to calculate their reaction time when they were only focusing on one thing. And in the second part, we asked them to do the exact same task, but answering questions that we were asking at the same time. Uh, this time we were measuring their reaction times while they were multitasking between the lights and the questions. Uh, for both parts, we also recorded the number of times they clicked on the button independently from when the light would turn on, and the experiment uh, lasted between 5 to 10 minutes. So now the materials we use to build our setup. So we use one Latte Panda computer, that is that screen that you see in the photo, uh, one button sensor, one blue LED light, several wires to connect everything, also our mobile phones to make notes, uh, one power bank, and then we also use a programming site called Bonsai. You can see a little bit of our code there. Okay, um, so after collecting uh, everyone's data with a programming script uh, uh, that one of, the, one of our TAs helped us uh, right, uh, we've managed to create some graphs uh, to show our results. So first, uh, so first we have the reaction time graphs, uh, which can clearly show uh, show us that when people uh, weren't be asked questions, they were quicker to click on the button rather than when they were being asked questions. That is also shown in the second graph uh, where we presented the delay. The delay is basically the subtraction of the reaction time with the questions minus the reaction time without the questions. 
since it's a positive value, it clearly it clearly shows us that the reaction time with the questions was bigger um, than without the questions. Then we also studied the number of clicks, but the results uh, we have are not very reliable because we only started uh, collecting this data in the middle of our experiment, uh, so we don't have any pilot data. And when we finished the experiment, we realized that there was a, pro a problem in the program, so it was counting more clicks than people did. So here you can see that uh, the number of clicks with question and with no question doesn't have a big difference. Uh, now we'll take a look at our survey and its connection to um, our results of the experiment. Uh, first, we, we asked some the subjects about gender and we can see that uh, females have a slightly slower reaction time, uh, lower reaction time delay, but it's not very much of a difference. Uh, as for age, uh, the groups uh, of 30, uh, 10 to 30 years old and 31 to 49 years old uh, have uh, more or less the same reaction time delay, but uh, this increases a lot for 50, uh, people above 50 years old. But as you can see in that graph, uh, these results are not very reliable because we only have had three people above 15 years old. Uh, in the survey, we also asked the subjects if they did share a personal or workspace. And when we compared the answers with our results, we can see that people who do share personal workspace have a smaller reaction time than people who do not. In the survey, we also asked if people think they are good at multitasking. And what we discovered is that people who said yes actually have a slower uh, reaction time <laughs> than those who said no. <laughs> okay, so now we've described you what graphs we've created, but what do they actually mean and how do they answer our questions? So first, the reaction time graphs that do meet our expectations. That is, with questions, people took longer to click on, on the buttons which means that uh, while answering the questions, so multitasking uh, actually makes them be slower on their performance. So multitasking isn't as efficient as people perci uh, perceive it to be. Now with the number of clicks, uh, we were expecting people uh, to click only 15 times uh, in both uh, tasks because the light only turns on 15 times. But what we realized was that people were clicking way more than 15 times in both tasks. But again, because our results aren't as reliable as we thought, we can really conclude that and understand why. Now let's take a look at the demographical patterns that we found. Uh, for gender, we sort of had the expectation that women would be better at multitasking than men because that's such a well-known stereotype. Uh, we did find that women have had a a uh, slightly lower reaction time delay than men, but uh, because the difference is so small, we can't really take any conclusions. So from what we found, uh, gender doesn't really seem to influence multitasking. Mm -hmm. um, as for the age, we expected that older people would be worse at multitasking because uh, as you age, the brain uh, loses, uh, deteriorates and isn't as capable of connecting different regions. And we found that from 10 to 49 years old, the average multitasking performance is pretty steady, but it lowers drastically for people above 50. But again, because we had a small sample, uh, the, these results aren't very reliable. Uh, as for the shared space, our expectation was that people who did share a personal workspace would be better at multitasking. Our results confirmed our expectation, and we concluded that was the case because those people um, mo often have to handle both personal tasks and interaction with people. About the question if they think they're good at multitasking, we actually didn't have any expectations because we didn't have a specific result in mind. But we found that people who think they are good at multitasking actually have a longer reaction time delay than those who don't. So I don't think they're, they know that you're good at multitasking because the results are reversed. 
so for our conclusion, uh, we can see that uh, that multitasking doesn't seem to be very effective since people actually take longer to perform their tasks and it tires more their brain. And so even the overall performance uh, gets deteriorated. Although, um, although we have suspicions, we can conclude if gender and age do actually um, affect multitasking. And finally, we can say that people who share spaces are better at multitasking. So it is an ability and a skill that can be practiced and improved. So now we would like to uh, thank all the people who kindly uh, agreed to participate in our experiment. So uh, all the TAs and especially the tourism who helped us walk through the project. <laughs> And to Danby, who taught us a lot in only two weeks. <laughs> and finally, our fellow Nero Pediatrics and everyone at the Mission Palma Foundation who made this project possible. Any questions that you would like to ask about the data and our results? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. What? Can you repeat, please? Yeah. Yes. Oh, actually, that that part we read in several research articles. We didn't I, really... Because uh, when you are multitasking, you aren't actually... Um, uh, you are actually task switching. Uh, you can only focus on one thing at, at, at a time, but the brain switches its attention several times, which tires and confuses the brain. <laughs>